In this video, we will be looking at the Positions tab in the JP Morgan Chase Bank U-Invest trading platform. So we have already signed in to Chase Bank, the, and we are in the Investments U-Invest um, platform. The last video, we reviewed the Summary tab. Now we're in the Positions tab. The first thing I want to note for you is that we once again see the uh, value, days gain and loss, the gain and loss that we saw from uh, the previous summary tab, and we see the cash and sweep funds. Now, if you remember, the cash and sweep funds is something that we saw with the graph in the summary tab. So we saw here that we have cash in short term, it's $32 and 13 cents. Well, if we go into the positions tab, we can that that is the same amount here, $32 and 13 cents. So that's cash and sweep funds. And to say about this is that uh, according to Investopedia, which is, you know, where I just looked it up, uh, it has the clearest explanation of uh, sweep accounts. Basically, some accounts have the option of automatically putting their money in higher earning cash funds, but they still make a negligible return on their investment. So long story short, once you put your money into your trading account or your retirement account, better to invest it in um, the positions, in the securities that you want, rather than leaving it as cash. Um, I guess some of these large accounts um, get automatically picked up and put into other cash accounts. But the bottom line is that the cash accounts don't make you the return that an actual investment in you know a company or in a stock would or a, a bundle of stocks right in a mutual fund so um, but it just shows you there that this is what i have available so one thing we can look at in this uh, tab here there's a lot of different um, relationships with the price quantities cost gain loss and the value of our stocks so at first glance, it might look like, um, okay, so let's look at a simple one. Uh, how about just a plain old stock? This is United Airlines, UAL. And so for United Airlines stock, uh, the price is uh, $35.93. Now, if you remember, when we looked at our trading history, um, that's not where the stock was bought. So a quick uh, glance back at the summary tab, we could under trade confirmations, which we learned in tutorial one um, in our review of the summary tab. All I had to do was go under trade confirmations, remember to put in the range, uh, the date range, which I wanted to look at. I knew that I bought American Airlines uh, in 2020, and I could see that the trade was confirmed at the price of $32.435. So when I see here, it's doing, it's at $36. It's from when I bought it. So that's, that's a good indicator of when you bought your stock. So it's doing a positive uh, 0.74 or 2.10%. Uh, Not bad. Um, from when I bought it. So again, that's another way you can tell. So that's what the price is in relationship to. <clears throat> if we look at the quantity, this is the amount that I have. And when you look at the cost, something doesn't seem to add up right. So if you do the calculation, the current price of $36 times the amount of stock that I have, the quantity, at $124, uh, that comes out to be the current value of 4464. So that makes sense. So you multiply price times quantity gives you the current value. But if you do quantity times the cost, it gives you this different number, 498720.56. And that doesn't show up anywhere here. So what is this cost number here? It's not the price times the quantity because that gives you value. So what is cost? So if you do the calculation, cost uh, comes out to, you will see that um, 
the UAL, the UAL trade confirmation was at $32,435. That's not what's shown here. It's shown as 32.44. This will affect um, ultimately what cost is. So cost is the calculation of the quantity times the unit cost that you bought it at, at which you bought it. Not surprisingly what's shown here as the unit cost because the, the trade confirmation is more accurate. The trade confirmation was at 32.435, which gets rounded to 32.44. That's what you see as the unit cost. So when you do the calculation, then it shows you the accurate cost, 4021.94, 4021.94. So there's the cost. Uh, if you just multiplied quantity times unit cost, you get this rounded number, 4022.56, which is not the same thing. You're off by about a dollar, <throat> and you are consistently off by a dollar. But that's because the system knows the quantity at which you bought your security. It knows the exact cost at which you purchased it. And then it doesn't, uh, it gives you this rounded cost instead, but then gives you the accurate uh, cost at the end. So if you just multiply these two together, you're not going to get this cost number at the end. Um, but that's how you figure that out is that the unit cost that is displayed is not the unit cost that's calculated for the final cost here at the end. It, they, they take it from the actual trade confirmation. So I, that was a lot of hair pulling for me on my end as to why I was constantly off, even though they were showing me this number here, it turns out it was rounded. Now, what is a tax lot anyway? Because in this view, this is the only view that allows you to look at the numbers uh, more in depth, because if you switch out of tax lot view, notice that these, this banner will change. Right now, acquired tax term, quantity, unit cost, and cost. When we toggle out, uh, now you just see quantity cost gains and loss. You don't have that unit cost. So a tax lot, when it says show all tax lots, what is a tax lot? Well, you know, I'm no expert. I've said this before. It's in the disclaimer. I am not an accountant. I'm not a securities manager. I'm not in finance. I am not a banker, I'm just someone who enjoys the JP Morgan Chase Bank U-Invest trading platform. So I had to look it up. So a tax lot, tax lots are multiple purchases made on different dates at different prices. So they're kind of like a bundle. Um, they're not really, it's not taxes at all, it's um, just the uh, multiple purchases made. So they're made, um, let's see. They will each have a different cost basis, but what is a cost basis? So a cost basis uh, is the original value of an asset for tax purposes. So obviously the original value matters so that you can um, record it in your taxes. Um, and so when we say show the tax lot, we're saying let's see the unit cost, the original value um, at which we purchase the security. Um, ironically, for some reason, it rounds it for you and then doesn't tell you. If anyone has a better explanation as to why that is the case, if rounding is not the appropriate word, please let me know in the comments um, and we can all learn together as we get into the nuts and bolts of uh, these different toggles. So switching back out of this, one of the things you can do is click any of your securities and will give you a display of um, more information on that particular security. So if we click UAL, it will then give you a bunch of information on the uh, on the stock. So um, and this is just general information. There are also um, other buttons you can press uh, for additional information um, on the stock. And if you click Summary Report, um, it just takes you basically to a printout of what you see here. So that's what happens when you click the security, just some information on it. If I click asset classes, it basically takes you to a table view 
of that pie chart we saw in the summary tab. Um, this is probably helpful for people who have, you know, a ton of different types of uh, securities that they're managing. Um, but really, it just takes you to, you know, your different equities. And since, you know, mine is so basic, it all looks, it basically looks like this exact same page. Um, it's, it's just the pie chart in um, graph form. So there's um, nothing really to sort out there. It, you know, it'll show me uh, securities and cash, <laughs> which is all that I have here. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's what the, the uh, asset classes button does. So that's the positions tab for the JP Morgan Chase Bank U Invest platform. This one is much shorter than the last video. So be sure to stick around for video three tutorial when we talk about the transactions tab, which can also be found in the drop down menu or just straight across the banner. Take care. And be sure to subscribe with Nuts and Bolts Learning.